Good morning, friends. Today is January 22nd. My name is Dana Corsello, and I'm the Canon Vicar of the Cathedral, and so happy to be with you on this day when the church celebrates the life of St. Vincent of Saragossa of Spain, deacon of Saragossa and martyr who lived until the year 304. Let me begin. The Savior of the nations has come, he who lights our way and heals us. Let us pray. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you've made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our praise this morning is from Many Are the Light Beams. Many Are the Light Beams, and this is from Wonder, Love, and Praise, hymn number 794, hymn 794. Many are the light beams from the one light. Our one light is Jesus. Many are the light beams from one light. We are one in Christ. Many are the branches of one tree. Our one tree is Jesus. Many are the branches of one tree. We are one in Christ. The scripture I want to share with you this morning or is assigned is from Isaiah chapter 45, beginning at the 18th verse. This is from the prophet Isaiah. For thus says the Lord who created the heavens, he is God, who formed the earth and made it, he established it, he did not create it in chaos, he formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I did not speak in secret in the land of darkness. I did not say to the offspring of Jacob, seek me in chaos. I, the Lord, speak truth. I declare what is right. Assemble yourselves and come together. Draw near, you survivors of the nations. They have no knowledge. Those who carry about their wooden idols and keep on praying to a God that cannot save. Declare and present your case. Let them take counsel together. Who told this long ago? Who declared it of old? Was it not I, the Lord? There is no other God besides me, a righteous God and a Savior. There was no one besides me. Turn to me and be saved for all the ends of the earth. For I am God, and there is no other. By myself I have sworn from my mouth has gone forth in righteousness a word that shall not return. To me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. Only in the Lord it shall be said of me, all righteousness and strength, all who were incensed against him shall come to me and be ashamed. In the Lord all the offspring of Israel shall see triumph and glory. Here ends the lesson. Now this piece of scripture was selected for St. Vincent of Saragossa, also known as Vincent Martyr, um, because he was martyred in just truly a most horrific way. Uh, perhaps my little lesson today is not meant for young ears. Um, but he was martyred because he refused to recant his faith, his love of Jesus Christ. Um, so you will understand why that scripture is appropriate. He was martyred um, under Emperor Diocletian around the year 304. So our lesser feast and fast says he spent most of his life in the city of Saragossa where he was educated and ordained to the diaconate by Bishop Valerius of Saragossa, who commissioned Vincent to preach throughout the diocese. Because Valerius, this is interesting, he suffered a speech impediment and Vin Vincent acted as his spokesman. When the Roman Emperor Diocletian began persecuting Christians in Spain, they were both brought before the Roman governor Dacian. I'm not sure how you say it, D-A-C-I-A-N, um, in Valencia. And Vincent and his bishop, Valerius, were confined to the prison of Valencia. 
though he was finally offered relief if he would consign scripture to the fire, Vincent refused. Speaking on behalf of his bishop, he informed the judge that they were ready to suffer everything for their faith and that they could pay, pay no heed either to threats or promises. His outspoken manner so angered this government that Vincent was inflicted every sort of torture upon him. And this is where it gets horrible. He was stretched on the rack and his flesh torn with iron hooks. Then his wounds were rubbed with salt and he was burned alive upon a red hot gridiron. I'm sorry to share that. Finally, he was cast into prison and laid on a floor scattered with broken pottery where he died. During his martyrdom, he preserved such peace and tranquility that it astonished his jailer, who repented from his sins and was converted. Vincent's dead body was thrown into the sea in a sack, but it was later recovered by the Christians and his veneration immediately spread throughout the church. And then his, this aged Bishop Valerius, he got to be exiled. But here's what's really interesting. According to legend, after being martyred, ravens protected St. Vincent's body from being devoured by vultures until his followers could, could come recover his body. His body was taken to what is now known as Cape St. Vincent, and a shrine was erected over his grave, which continued to be guarded by a flock of ravens. In the time of the Muslim, excuse me, in the time of Muslim rule in the Iberian Peninsula, the Arab ge geographer Ali Iridisi noted this constant guard by the ravens for which the place was named by him. Eventually, uh, King Alfonso I of Portugal had the body of the saint exhumed in 1173, and it was brought by ship to the Lisbon Cathedral where it stands now. The relics and all of this is depicted on the coat of arms of Lisbon, which is really interesting. So if you ever go to Lisbon, you should look for this in the cathedral. So here's a prayer. Almighty God, your deacon Vincent, upheld by you, was not terrified by threats nor overcome by torments. Strengthen us to endure all adversity with invincible and steadfast faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. It's incredible, isn't it? The life of some of these martyrs. So let me continue with our prayers. I want to have a confession or share a confession this morning. Holy One, we encounter you in our lives and try to follow faithfully, but so often we get lost or turn away. We try to love our neighbors and ourselves, and even by your grace to love our enemies, but we fail. We take the wrong path and stray from the way of your love. Forgive us, Lord, and guide us back to you. And then the assurance of pardon. We turn to you, God of love, and we accept your grace, we accept your pardon. We accept the gift of a new path through Christ our Lord. Amen. And my friends, our prayers, my prayers for you today, among the lowly you were born, Lord Jesus, save us. The wise and powerful bow down before you, Lord Jesus, teach us. You've come to lead us to holiness. Lord Jesus, guide us. You ask us to call on you, and so we offer you these our prayers. So whatever's on your heart this morning, whatever lamentation or anything you need, or even a thanksgiving, Lord Jesus, hear us. And our final prayer, actually one of two prayers. Jesus, you revealed yourself to the world so that all people might look to you and be saved. May we know the wholeness that you bring. Be our light in the darkness that we may not stumble and lift us up again if we fall. All this we ask in your name. 
Amen. And then finally, I've been praying this prayer for weeks from the Iona community, but I just love it. God, our challenger, our disturber, help us to confront all that makes for death and despair in our lives, in our communities, in our world. May we never lose sight of the possibility of transformation and be continually surprised by people who believe in each other. Amen. So my friends, I hope you can take some encouragement from Vincent of Saragossa. Um, may we all love God so ferociously that we give our lives like he did. May we all have such zeal for God. And may God bless you this day. May God's Son carry you, and may the Holy Spirit wrap you in their love. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen.